This is Matt Bichard with REIT.com and I'm here in La Quinta, California for REITWISE 2013, NARIT's Law, Accounting and Finance Conference. Joining me is David Farrer, Chairman of the Environmental Department of Greenbaum, Rowe, Smith & Davis. David, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's great to be here again, Matt. So with all the talk surrounding fiscal cliffs and sequestration, I know Washington's had its hands full lately, but is there any environmental legislation going on right now or coming down the pike that REITs should be aware of? Well, you know, I've given up prognosticating on federal legislation, and I'm not going to keep going on that. But, but what, what I will say is there's been a lot of activity on the state and the local level in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. Most specifically, developments in New Jersey and New York, which are telling us to watch carefully uh, on issues of state legislation, and also, just as importantly, on emergency rulemaking and on executive uh, taking of executive powers, exercising of executive powers. Uh, for example, uh, FEMA had been developing new maps of New Jersey and New York coastal maps because of the fact that the, the uh, due to the fact that the older maps were outmoded. Uh, clearly, the sea level is rising, and they needed to revisit the issue. Those maps hadn't been completed yet, but in the aftermath of Sandy, FEMA decided to release those maps early in advisory capacity, and they certainly showed new elevations, showing that people are going to have to build at higher elevations than they had, especially uh, in the coastal regions, but also in areas along rivers and the like. This resulted in New Jersey passing an emergency rulemaking on the issue, which affects elevations at which people are rebuilding now, and, and which also will affect new development. And New York City uh, followed quickly, and here's where the executive power issue comes up. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg, by an executive fiat, also adopted the emergency FEMA maps uh, and declared that those rebuilding in areas of New York City affected by Sandy also have to follow the, the new maps. Uh, this leads not only to issues of residential rebuilding, but of rebuilding and new development in the commercial area. Uh, and I think the REITs will be seeing some new restrictions on the ability to commence development and also some significant increases, potential increases in cost for coping with the new rules in developments that are already in the works. And in your practice, have you seen any trends emerge regarding environmental issues that companies are facing? Well, now that uh, thankfully uh, we're seeing a lot more uh, development uh, restarting and proceeding, we certainly see that due diligence had reached a maturity even well before the recession. But the issues keep changing. And in this more post-recessionary environment, I'm particularly seeing a lot of attention being paid to the issue of vapor intrusion. This is an issue where uh, buildings can be affected by water pollution and soil pollution that causes vapors to rise up into buildings, causing uh, potential health risks and actual health risks. Uh, and this affects not only those who were responsible for the pollution in the first place, but anyone who's got a building uh, that's affected by contamination that might well be due to uh, a neighbor. So we're seeing our developer clients uh, paying and, and, and REIT clients paying a lot of attention to the vapor intrusion issue. And looking at the issue of workplace toxins, what are the risks or the level of awareness companies must monitor in this area? I think companies have to bring a same level of awareness to the newer issues that have become commonplace with well-known issues like asbestos, radon, and lead paint. I think it's important for companies to have management plans, crisis management plans, uh, and pay particular attention to some of the newer toxin issues like pandemic flu, uh, like vapor intrusion as we spoke about, uh, the bed bugs, Legionnaire's disease, uh, and PCBs and, and caulks and the like. So I think if companies bring the same level of attention to these newer issues that they have to, the, uh, to those that we're all used to dealing with, uh, I think the REITs will be in good shape going forward on these points. David, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. It was great to be here again. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com. <laughs>